And I do know that there is a theoretical maximum in terms of uh, uh, getting rid of the nitrogen. So you basically have to excrete this nitrogen. You have to deaminate the amino acids and uh, excrete the nitrogen. And that does involve ammonia. And that there are theoretical maximums in your liver for <clears throat> getting rid of this uh, nitrogen and ammonia. Uh, I know that you could very, very easily double a gram per pound of ideal body weight and you're fine. You could probably triple that and you're fine. Um, there might be some people who try to quadruple that and get into some trouble. So uh, I, I do have some studies of cyclists who were uh, biking and burning a ton of calories and actually drinking so much whey uh, powder that 80% of their calories came from whey shakes and they were consuming, you know, over 600 grams of protein a day. And uh, this was a fairly short study, but they did not have any problems with uh, getting rid of ammonia or having toxicity. So uh, I know that there, you know, <clears throat> most people are never, ever, ever going to run into this problem unless you're consuming more than 80% of your calories from whey shakes and then burning way more energy than usual biking all day. Uh, you're probably not going to run into problems. If I eat two, two, two steaks a day, it's half of that protein being wasted and lost and I can't absorb it. Yeah, I mean, that's basically completely not true. <clears throat> so when you eat a huge bolus of protein, um, you, you get a slowing effect in the small intestine. You get this ileal break where your, your intestine slows way, 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 way down. And even if you've maxed out the transport of amino acids from the intestinal lumen into your bloodstream, uh, you slow down the transit time so much that you do eventually absorb all of that. And so uh, we have way too many people who are living on one meal a day to think that you can't consolidate protein into larger, less frequent meals. So you can absolutely get away with that. Now, I do think it's on a U-shaped curve where um, it might not be optimal to just eat once every other day or once a week or once a month or once a year. At some point, you're going to hit uh, a point where you've gone past optimal. And so the question is, you know, what is absolute optimal? Uh, you know, it's somewhere between a constant IV drip of amino acids and eating once a year. <laughs> I, I personally think that once a day is probably uh, too infrequent to be optimal. So I'm kind of like in at least two meals a day, maybe more. Uh, as you get thinner and thinner and thinner, you have to eat protein more frequently because you're using some of it for energy. And if you're not eating it, you have to catabolize your muscles, which is why all your bodybuilders and your bikini models, by the time they're done with show prep, they're eating, you know, protein every three or four hours. And that's really just to prevent catabolism because their fat stores are so low and you can only harvest a certain amount of calories from your fat when it gets that low. We, you know, we have these protein overfeeding studies where you just dump a thousand calories of protein on top of someone's existing diet, and they basically don't gain any fat mass at all. They lean mass goes up slightly, energy expenditure goes up slightly, uh, but fat mass doesn't seem to go up. So within some certain uh, reasonable limits, you're just basically not going to gain fat from eating more protein. And you're right, the, the thermic effect is so high that about 30% of the calories are just gone. So calling protein four calories per gram is probably just not even fair at all. We should really call it three calories per gram or maybe even slightly lower 